Can I see Mr. Roman? What do you want to see him about? Well, I'd like to give him something that belongs to him. What do you want? Uh, can I see Mr. Roman? What do you want to see him about? I'd like to give him something that belongs to him. Come inside. What was it you just said it to do? I said I wanted to see Mr. Roman. What for? Well, I, I, I've got something for him. Could mean a lot of things. What have you got? You're not Mr. Roman. How do you know? You just don't fit. Is it all right, Mr. Gino? I guess it's all right. I'd better take him in myself. Come on. Wait here.
Sí, él y debe. I like it. That's all right. You're a good barber, Miss Cornish. Oh, thank you, Mr. Rowan. How do you feel? I mean, uh, how do you feel being a barber? Cutting men's hair. She feels good, huh? You look at her. Hey, she's blushing. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Roman, you moved. But you didn't. Quick enough. Get her out of here. Stupid dame. A beast. A filthy beast. What can I do for you, Jack? Are you Mr. Roman? That's right. What you'd like to have is back. Is it mine? Got your name in it. Where'd you find it? Well, I don't remember the name of the street. Uh, it was in front of a restaurant, though. How much was in it? Eighty-one dollars. I spent a dollar and a half for breakfast. There's uh, seventy-nine fifty there now. How do you like that for an honest guy? I don't. Silly law-abiding jerk. How do you like that? He comes all the way out here just because he found it. You know, you ought to get a medal. Gino, go buy him a medal. Thanks. I got a medal. Oh. XGI, huh? Yeah, uh, yes, I was in the Navy. I like him. I want to do something for him. Give him a saw buck. That's the trouble with you, Gino. You have no appreciation for honesty. Tell me something. What made you bring the wallet back? Well, I don't know. Now that I'm here, I wonder myself. I guess I'm just a sucker. <laughs> I like that, too. Can you drive a car? Yes, sir. When you got a job, what do you need two chauffeurs for? Fire Claiborne. All right. No, no, wait a minute. I don't, I don't want to take another fellow's job. Now take it easy, Jack. The name's Scott. Chuck Scott. Okay, Scotty. Hello, Fats. Fats, what do you do besides talking the telephone all the time? I've been trying to reach you for 45 minutes. Oh, no, never mind that. How about Johnson? Did you contact him yet? Or what's he stall this time? Oh. I'll have him at my house for dinner Wednesday night. No fats, not Thursday, Wednesday. Yes? Right, be right there. Thanks, Job. Oh, Job. Like in the Bible? Kings, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job. Fine, I won't forget it. Bye.
Mr. Roman. If there's something wrong, I can't slow the car down. Relax, Scotty. I take care of all that back here. You just handle the wheel. You mean you... That's right. Yes, sir. Feel, Scotty. Well, fine. But I don't get it. Who does? Now, he's all right. He's a good chauffeur. You're all right, Scotty. Thanks. Uh, what do we do now? You take over. This is all yours. Well, Mr. Johnson, how do you like our little house? Oh, it's charming. However, I never thought I'd enjoy the pleasure of having dinner here. You know, Mr. Johnson had the idea I didn't like him. Just because he took away some of my business. I guess he doesn't know you too well. I must say there aren't many men would have taken it the way your husband has, Mrs. Roman. Live and let live. That's my motto. Isn't that so, Gino? Oh, the world is big enough for all of us. You too, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> well, thank you, Gino. Now, I have a very interesting house, too, in Havana. I'd be very pleased if you'd all come and visit me sometime. You've been in Havana, haven't you, Mrs. Roman? No, I've never been there. No, Mrs. Roman doesn't travel very much. Oh, I'm sorry. Doctor's orders? No, mine. If you'll excuse me, I'll, uh, I'll let you go on with your business. Oh, uh, good night, Mr. Johnson. Good night, Miss Roman. It was nice meeting you. Thank you. She's lovely, isn't she? Oh, she's beautiful. How about a little brandy? Well, I don't mind if I do. Where's Tommy? No, he behaved badly. I put him in a cellar. Oh, Tommy's a dog. It's a big dog. Oh. <laughs> I'm not drinking alone, am I? Oh, no. no. Mr. Roman, could I ask you a very personal question? Oh, yes, of course. What is your business, really? Gino, what business would you say we were in, really? No, I'd say... The amusement business. The amusement business? Yes. Strictly for laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> All kidding aside, Mr. Johnson, I still want to buy those two ships of yours. Mm, but I don't want to sell. Well, maybe we can talk you into it. What do you say, Mr. Johnson? Well, I'll think it over. Oh, no, that'll be too long. I could let you know tomorrow. No, tonight. Now. Well, uh, how much would you give me for them? Nothing. 
<laughs> oh, you're joking, huh? Oh, well. <laughs> I've had a lovely evening, but I've got to run along. We can go into it further. Oh, tomorrow. no, you can't go now, Mr. Johnson, without seeing the rest of the house. We haven't even seen the upstairs or the wine cellar. Oh, we have a nice wine cellar. Well, uh, I would like to see the wine cellar. Napoleon Brandy? 1815? Oh, Gino, I don't believe it. Why, I didn't think there was a bottle of real Napoleon Brandy left in existence. Why, Gino, do you realize that... Gino! Gino! G hey, Gino! 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 Hey, Gino! Gino! G Gino! Turn off here, Standing off the closeness. Think you better step back. What happened to Clayburn? Well, he's gone, miss. It's Mrs. Roman. I beg your pardon. I didn't know. Oh, that's all right. I think I like it better the other way. I can do. It's begins three years ago. If you can't do that, call me, miss. And if you can't do that, just look the other way. You can go back to the car.
what's out there straight ahead. Um, well, Havana, I think. Have you ever been there? Yes, I, I was a long time ago. What was it like? Oh, for me, it was cheap hotels, cheap restaurants, cheap friends. All places are alike when you're broke. It would be worth a thousand dollars to me to get to Havana. A thousand dollars? Yes. Steamship tickets only about 30. I could never make it alone. Why not? Have you ever been afraid? Really afraid? What do you want me to do? I want you to take me to Havana. But why me? I think I can trust you. You mean you think I look like I um, need a thousand dollars, huh? Have it your way. But I still think I can trust you. When can we go? How soon can you leave? No, right this minute. That's a pretty long swim. I'll check the sailings tomorrow. Think I'd better take you home now? All right. That'll be 4220. Sign there, please. Two tickets for Havana tonight, please. I'm sorry, there's no space available. We're completely sold out. Are you sure? Just a moment, there may be a cancellation. Right. Yes, here's one. But it's a single cabin, will that do you? Uh, yes, it'll have to. How many tickets? Uh, two. How much is that? That'll be 5760. Sign there, please. The SS Cuba leaves pair 26 at 11 o'clock tonight. Thank you, sir. Keep the change. Thank you. Tickets for Havana. It's on a ship called the uh, Cuba. Leaves 11 o'clock tonight. Now listen carefully. Have dinner with him as usual. At 9.30, say you want to take a drive. I'll be waiting in my room. Now don't you call. Have Job call as usual. I'll bring the car around. No, don't worry. They don't know where I am. Yes, I'm picking him up at the Union Bank now. Good. See you later. Bye. Thursday. Any particular boat? Flowers, did you take care of them? Yeah, red and white roses, big anchor. 150 bucks. You know, Eddie, 15 years ago in Cicero, same roses, the same anchor, could have picked it up for a double saw, but maybe two bits. 150 bucks. Brother, I don't care what they say, that's inflation. Scotty. Yes, sir? Mrs. Roman goes for a drive almost every day, doesn't she? Uh, yes, sir. 
Where did she go? Nowhere in particular. What do you mean, nowhere? Uh, well, just uh, along the beach. Always the same place. Uh, yes, yes, same place. How do you know that? I didn't. I want to go there, Scotty. Uh, now? Now. Yes. What did you see out there? I wouldn't know. What do you see out there, Scotty? Sky, water. Must have a special meaning for her. What does it mean to you? I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. You don't have to be to figure this out. Is that right, Gino? I'd say she was contemplating a voyage. Did she ever say anything to you about it? Why would she tell me? You've got the kind of face women like to talk to. I think they've gone, Gino. I don't have to think, I know. To Havana on a Cuba. Found it in a wastebasket. What do you want me to do? Play the other side. Thank you. 
I didn't know you were a musician. Haven't played in a long time. Still scared? I'm getting over it. But you don't get over three years of terror in one night. <sighs> he couldn't follow us here. What's our first stop? Havana. Looks like all roads lead to Havana. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? I owe you a thousand dollars. Who did it belong to before? They don't ask you that when you spend it. It's not our boat. How much time do we have? Forget time. You think we'll make it? We've got to. Señor, el caballo no puede estar aquí toda la noche. Hey, what are we stopping here for? El caballo no puede estar aquí toda la noche. What was that? The horse is tired. Take us back to the boat. Did you hear me? Take us back to the boat. I already told you the horse is tired. Chuck, let's get out. Say, uh, our boat leaves in an hour for South America. How much of a walk is it from here to the docks? 
Yo no entiendo bien inglés. Vamos, Pancho. What did he say? Something about not understanding English. He must not understand money either. Didn't take his fare. Chuck, what do we do now? I don't know. Uh, let's get a drink. All right. Oh, wait a minute. We should go back to the boat. Who's afraid now? Any steam in here. The steam Don't care what happens now. I just don't care. Laura, don't keep saying that. Please don't keep saying. I won't. I won't say it anymore. Because I do.
Can a scar? Knife wound. No other marks. We're waiting, Mr. Scott. Oh, can I make you understand you've got the wrong man? I loved her. You loved her, so you killed her. That's understandable. She was all I had. So you made sure no one could take her from you. Oh, you're blind. Why would we come all this way together? I let you tell me why. Just answer three questions. How long has this woman been in Havana? Oh, we got off the boat around six o'clock this evening. Eight hours ago. Had she ever been here before? No. Did she know anyone here, anyone at all? No. There is your answer. Do you still insist somebody else did it? In a place where she had just arrived, in a place where she had never been in her life before? And above all, with your own knife? It wasn't my knife. But you just admitted a moment ago it was your I knife. I didn't admit it was my knife. I merely said it looked like my knife, but it wasn't. Oh, yes. Now I remember. The knife you bought. You did buy a knife. Yes, I bought a knife! Save your strength, my friend. You may need it. <laughs> your knife. Let me see. Describe it again, please. On the handle of the knife I had, the little carved monkey was holding his ears. And the knife you've got is covering his eyes. You can see that. It's covering his eyes, but not mine. Oh, don't joke. If you don't believe me, ask the shopkeeper. Find out what kind of a knife I bought. Are you sure this is the place? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I repeat, for a stranger in Havana, you certainly found an out-of-the-way place in a very much of a hurry. We didn't find it. I told you a guide brought us here. I know. The guide who kept pestering you, the one who drove you to the nightclub, eh? You don't believe anything, do you? My clients have a chronic tendency to color the truth. You first, Mr. Scott. Just a moment, please. Not so quick. Where is Chin? I am Chin. I'm Lieutenant Acosta, Homicide Squad. What can I do for you? Madam, will you please tell these gentlemen? We will ask the questions. Take a look at this man here. Did you ever see him before? Yes. When? The gentleman was here earlier tonight. Alone? No, he was with a lady. Did he buy anything? Silk handkerchief for a lady. That all? The gentleman also bought a knife. What kind of knife? A knife with a jade handle, to cut letters, Got fruit. To hang on the wall, maybe? Describe the jade handle. The jade handle had a carved monkey. We know that. Describe the monkey. Monkey was holding his eyes. So. Oh, you're crazy. I, I bought the one that was holding his ears. The gentleman is mistaken. Are you sure the one he bought was holding its eyes? They come three to his set. First one assaulted his gentleman. The others I still have. I can show you. Show me. These are imported from Hong Kong. I only ordered one set. Cost too much. Never sold any except to this gentleman. See? Well, Mr. Scott, I don't understand. I, I'm sure I bought this one. The one that's holding its ears. Why did you buy any knife? I didn't buy a knife. 
I mean, I, I didn't intend to buy a knife, but well, Lorna was looking for jade, and she said the only jade she had was on the knife handles. And the one we finally bought was this one. The one that's holding its ears. Perhaps Madame Chin switched to the knives, huh? She must have. Did you ever see Chin before? No. Then why would she change the knives? Answer me! Why would she change the knives? I don't know. Because you are a stranger, and only because you are a stranger, we've given you every chance to clear yourself. You should have been locked up an hour ago. Admit it. You know you killed her. Admit it! All right. Then you did kill her. Yes. Why, Mr. Scott? Because she was afraid. Because she wanted to go back. Back? Where? To her husband. Her husband? Her name wasn't Mrs. Scott. Her name was Mrs. Eddie Rome. We left Miami together last night on the Cuba. We docked here this morning. Didn't leave our cabin till it was dark. We wound up in that nightclub. We had a drink there. Mr. Scott, you are a gentleman. Only from the viewpoint of the police, of course. Have a cigarette. No hay sangre de la banda. Tú no puedes ver escapar por la escalera de emergencia. 
Busquen en todos los cuartos. ¿Y este cuarto qué vamos a hacer con él? Debe estar aquí en este edificio. Vamos a buscarlo. Tiene que estar aquí adentro. ¡Abran la puerta! ¡Es la autoridad! ¡Abran la puerta! ¡Adelante! Aquí no tiene ningún negocio aquí en mi casa. Si no, ¿sabes? se calla, me la llevo a la no cárcel. No hay nada. No está en este piso. Vámonos para abajo. Si sí, él está en el edificio, lo encontraremos. Seguro, vamos. I just thought of something. Do you know the man that takes the pictures at the La Habana Club? You know, the little flashlight photographs? Not that it matters now, but I just thought that maybe he did get something. And if he did, it might. the same as we paid the last time, and not one cent more. Then perhaps I do business elsewhere. Look, we run the stuff across, not you. What do you have to do? Just wear out that seat. Of course, that you do. I don't mind assuming the usual business risks, but when it comes to knifing women... Knifing women? All you did is switch a couple of knives. I had a visit from the police tonight. They asked a lot of questions. In our business, you can't afford visits from the police.
your deal. No? Then you're out of business. I don't think so. No? Who's going to buy your stuff? You are. Yeah? Why? If you don't, certain people may find out certain things which you might not want mentioned. Sorry you said that. I'm sorry it had to be said. <laughs> I could never make it alone. 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 Hospital. Commander Davidson, just a moment, please. Commander Davidson's office. Who? Oh, of course I remember you, Scott. Yes, he's here. Of course you may. Just a minute. Chuck Scott would like to speak to you, sir. Fine. He's on the phone. Oh. You said if I ever needed you, I could call. Well, I need you now. Yes. Well, it's happened again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be there as soon as I can get there. Thanks, sir. Take it easy, Chuck. 
Now let's try and start with the beginning. There doesn't seem to be any beginning. All I can remember is the, the end of it. Sit down, Joe. this outfit. Where did I get this uniform? And the room I woke up in. How did I get in that house? Let's talk about what you remember. Forget about the uniform. Well, yes, I was... I was running away from the police in Havana in the middle of the night. But, Chuck, you haven't been to Havana in three or four years, to my knowledge. So we can eliminate that. That's dream stuff. But the girl that you met here in Miami, that's real. The girl that you drove to the beach, the one that wanted to know what's out there straight ahead, that girl. Yes. But that's all I remember, what she said. But the beach, you said you remember the beach. Yeah, the beach. But that's all. Why do you keep looking at the clock? I don't know, Doc. I keep feeling that there's something I, that I've got to do. Don't let that worry you. That's symptomatic in shock cases. But you did remember to call me. You did remember to come here. You're pretty well out of it, Chuck. Yes, but I keep feeling that I... I know. Technically, this would be identified in a case such as yours as an anxiety neurosis. <laughs> that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But it's not, Chuck. Believe me, it's not. You understand? Yes. But I still keep feeling that I've... Take you out. We'll go to the Florida Club. Or would you rather go for a ride? Take a look at the ocean. Now, Scotty showed me a rendezvous this afternoon. Got a very nice view. You're very nervous this evening, Lorna. What's the matter? Job. Will you please tell Scotty to bring the car around? Scotty's gone. Gone? Yeah, quit. He saw him leave. He even yelled after him. Didn't even turn around. It's going to cost you 125 bucks for a new uniform. Still want to go for that ride? Thanks, no. will do you a lot of good. It'll help you let go, relieve the tension. That's all you need, Chuck. Ben, turn the clock to the wall. What's the idea? My friend is a clock watcher.
I don't understand you, Lana. I just don't understand you. Why don't you answer it? Might be Scotty. It couldn't be Scotty. How could it be Scotty? Gino said Maybe that... he quit. Maybe he didn't. Answer the phone. Answer it. Hello. It's for you. Yes? Who wants to talk to him? The Fats. Yeah, I wanted to see you. Talk to you about your place. Yeah, I'll be right over. Wait for me. No, alone. Johnson was an obstinate man. I don't like obstinate people. Edie. Edie. Can't we talk things over together like two civilized human beings? All I want. I know. All you want is to leave this house. The way I came in. I had nothing then, and I'm asking for nothing when I leave. Just let me go. Living in this house for three years, you must have found out a lot of things. I wouldn't tell anyone. Joe. Eddie. Please, Eddie. Don't have him lock me in. her name. Good evening, Mr. Roman. Hello, Sally. How are you? Fine, thank you. Please. Hello, Albert. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Good evening, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hello, 
How's Mrs. Roman tonight? Quite well, thank you, Albert. Should we join you later? No. How about a little supper, Mr. Roman? No, I think I'd like a bottle of wine. Lanson 28. Yes, sir. Uh, Lanson 28. Yes, sir. Eddie, why don't you let me have him picked up? How far can he get in that uniform? They'll grab him in a minute. Chuck, I've got to make a phone call. We'll be back in a minute. Yes. Are you listening? Why don't you let me have him picked up? But I want to know I can't ask him in the police station. Oh. What do you think the deal was? Eddie, don't get mad, but they had something cooked up. What I can't get is the guy running out. Maybe he didn't. Look, Doc Davison. Still at the Florida Club, yes, Louise. Oh? Well, I'll be back in about a half an hour. Fine. My dog. Oh, hello, Rowan. Hello, Doc. How are you, Doctor? How's the Navy? Fine. Commander, huh? Look at all this finish. You've done all right for yourself. <laughs> Not bad. How's Mrs. Rowan? Fine, thanks. Haven't seen you since you joined. Yes, it has been some time. Oh, won't you sit down and join us? No, thank you. I have a friend waiting for me at the bar. Turned your practice over to a swell guy. I like him very much. So does Lorna. Lorna? Lorna. Mrs. Roman. Why, of course. It was silly of me. <laughs> sure you won't join us for that drink? Uh, uh, no, thank you. My friend's still waiting for me. Nice seeing you. Remember me to your wife. I didn't think you believed any of the things I told you. I believed you. Want to buy your face, Fats? Sure, I'd like to sell you the place, Eddie, but uh, I don't like the way you buy. Pardon me, uh, will you okay this check? Aren't you afraid you missed your boat, Eddie? What did you say, Fats? I said, aren't you afraid you'll miss your boat? What boat? Aren't you leaving for Havana tonight? What are you talking about? I swear I saw your car at the docks this afternoon. Okay. It's a secret. It's all right. Start all over. Only slower this time. I saw your chauffeur buy two tickets for... Skip it. 
I didn't see a thing. Gino, call the house. Cuba, they left 15 minutes ago. If they're on the Cuba, they left 15 minutes ago, but I don't think they're on the Cuba. Don't ask me why, because I don't know. But I don't think they're on the Cuba. Find a mistake and we'll find them on the... Yeah, here it is. The Cristobal. Freighter. He's Pier 42, 11.30. Watch the road, I'm taking over. They're loading. Another hour, maybe two. No, they're still loading. We won't pull out of here for another hour yet. I'll stay down on the pier till we leave. Bad break. Only two ships leaving for Havana tonight. This in the Cuba. to keep telling you that as long as we're together. That'll be forever. 